الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب وحلم يجعل له إواجع أقمده سبحانه وتعالى وأشكره وهو أهل الحمد والثناء وأشهد أن لا إله وده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد نبده رسول ومستافا اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وأهله وصحبه وسلم Alhamdulillah bil alameen. And we thank Allah Almighty always for every opportunity to listen to guidance for ourselves. Every human being that Allah Almighty has brought to this earth, Allah has brought them. And Allah has promised us that we would always have guidance. And this was on the day of promises when all the souls were called together. We never thought that we would come here and be tested like this. But Allah wanted to be known. And the best way to be known is that Allah Almighty brings about difficulties and then bring the solutions to the difficulties so you may know that there is something greater than ourselves especially when we cannot solve the difficulties so we have to realize that Allah Almighty has promised that there is no days or is the days are not promised to us, tomorrow is not promised to us, but Allah brings tomorrow. And once we are in tune to Allah Almighty, then we should not worry about our todays or our tomorrows if we're keeping guidance. Allah sent 124,000 prophets. the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Qur'an. Yet, there are seven billion people and we are all divided as a people. We have people of the book, of the Torah, of the laws of Moses, divided. We have people that of the gospel of Jesus, divided. We have people of the Qur'an that Muhammad brought are divided, yet all were sent by the same Creator because we all have been given the same message to hear and obey and to keep the goodness that Allah Almighty has put in us and to spread it. Goodness begets goodness. Religion is only good advice. So it doesn't matter if you say you are Christian or you are Jew or you are Muslim or you are Buddhist. If your good advice is to treat people good, that's a good religion. That's religion. But shaitan, as we know, is real. And whose interest is it in that we are divided and conquered? During the time of after Moses, The Bani Israel people, they had lost their way. And they were asking, they went to the prophet at that time, Prophet uh, Samuel, to assist them in defeating Goliath, defeating the oppression that they were getting on a <clears throat> consistent basis. Yet these were the people that Moses, may Allah be pleased with him, freed from Pharaoh, that they know that Allah Almighty had chastised them because Pharaoh's disobedience. And they knew this. They knew this. And yet they allowed themselves to be cheated by their desires and by their ego. Instead of them keeping the laws of Moses 
and practicing and establishing that that he brought that freed the people from their oppression, they returned back to oppression. And this is why when the Quran came, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came, he said one went before, he was fulfilling one went before, and he was just saying to the people that I'm not bringing anything different. The people have not changed. Allah Almighty's uh, will to the people have not changed, and it's the same guidance that was given to those who are on true guidance. It is the same. So when they went to Prophet Samuel and he prayed to Allah Almighty, Prophet Samuel, see the thing is, is that when we don't go to the Prophet and obey the Prophet, then we have to go to those inheritors of the Prophets because Allah Almighty says, obey me. <coughs> Obey the prophet and obey those who I'm putting authority over you. If you obey them, you're obeying me. If you love them, you're, you're, you, you, you're obeying me. If you obey them, then you're obeying me. If you follow them, you're following me. If you love them, you're loving me. That is the rope of Islam. So as long as we are holding on to that rope of safety then we have the ability to overcome the difficulties because Allah says verily with every difficulty there is relief. But when there's a difficulty that never are relieved, something is wrong here. And that's a sign that Allah Almighty sent the tornado and, and the hurricane up the eastern seaboard. And even though they came out and the meteorologist was talking about the storm is coming, no one could intervene and stop the storm from coming. They had to take shelter. And many of them were killed. May Allah bless their souls and forgive them and forgive us. Amen. But Allah is always telling us that He created us to know Him. And to know Him is not to be against him or against ourselves because when we're like that, it causes all kinds of difficulties in the universe and in the atmosphere. We are people of paradise. The right temperatures, things, we didn't even have to beg for anything. Everything, we were just had things coming just as Allah Almighty, just as we desired. Allah gave them to us because these were things that Allah Almighty were lawful for us and that's what we wanted. Now, Allah sent us here, not with total will, we have a little free will. We cannot change the sun from the place in which it's setting. We don't have that kind of will. But we have enough will to be able to want for our brother and sister, we want for ourselves, or help somebody else, and to be a good person. We have that ability. That's religion, and that is good advice. So anyone who is practicing good advice is Practicing religion. And it's so simple that we make it complex. We say, no, it can't be that simple. And we're all sitting here. we all listening. I'm listening too. No one is up and about, throwing everything, fight. They, we are listening. We have used our will and our discipline to come and sit and be respectful. Yet we could use that same will and go crazy up in here and start throwing shoes at each other. We can't tell the sun to stop shining, but we can throw some shoes. We can really act a fool. Or we can act like we have good sense. And good sense and common sense it's not so good no more, and it's not so common. And this is why you have, there are two billion Muslims. But in those two billion, there are 73 different sects of Muslims. And 
it gets worse because of humanity. Everyone is from Adam and Eve. Yet everybody is thinking that I'm more superior than you. So what is a Muslim? Allah says the Muslims are those best of people evolved for mankind. So you have to understand what that means. That's not saying that someone is saying that they're superior to you because it's not enough to say I'm superior to someone because it's all relative. But what Allah Almighty is saying to, about that is that these are people that continually become superior over their previous selves. Allah says if you change what is in you, I'll change what is outside of you. They are the best of people evolved for mankind. That's what brings about the peace. That's what brings about the prosperity. That's what brings about the happiness. Everyone wants that. Every human being wants the same thing. They want to be happy. They want to be recognized. They want to be respected. They want to have prosperity. They want the comfort of home. They want love. They want affection. They want friendships. And they like stuff. Everybody. I don't care what language. What geographical background. What, 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 uh, wherever you're from. Whatever you do. Everyone wants the same thing. So what is happening. Because we have gotten away from guidance. Everyone is seeking it through his own means, his own way. Everyone has become their own God. Setting up partners to Allah Almighty. Allah says that's the worst sin. Setting up partners to Allah. So now, we have people vying and saying, I can change this. I can change this. So we got all these big eyes everywhere saying I can change this. And they're saying, put me in a position and I'll show you that I can change it. And when they're put in the positions, they cannot change it. This is what happened to the Bani Israel people. This is not anything new. What we're going through as a human race of people is not something new. Allah says those nations of previous nations, they will have more skill and more knowledge, yet they failed too. Whenever we get away from guidance, and thinking we may guide ourselves, this is when Shaitan becomes our guide. Everybody becomes their own Lord. That's why we have so many different sects. It's easy when you break it down and you see that everyone is responsible. And the nature of the ego is that when difficulties are coming on, the first thing I'm going to do is point my finger at somebody else. It's your fault because I'm having a difficulty. No one is taking responsibility. And that's why Allah Almighty threatens us with punishment. Because when we're not taking responsibility, that's what sin is. Sin is not being responsible and bringing about the guidance that's going to make the people happy and to give them what Allah Almighty has intended for him. His will. So we're not exercising the will of our Lord. We're exercising our own little will. So we all love gods. We all love our lives. And our own little world. So the people, there some people that have the ability to build up such an arsenal of might to be right. So you have these wars and people killing each other. I'm right. I'm your Lord. That's what Pharaoh did. What makes you think that we're any different? We just don't have that same arsenal. But Allah said, if I had gave you what I gave Pharaoh, you'd be the same way. Anyone that gets away from guidance, become their own Lord. And as you gain power, money, and influence, it doesn't make you better. You just get more of, of that decadence come out more and more. You're able to spread yourself more and more. Now you can pay people to be like you. Or they better be like you as they get fired. So we have to understand that the Quran is talking to us. It's in the present continuous. No, Allah is not in the pages. Allah is in the hearts of the people. 
But the good advice has been recorded. And as we read the good advice, how can we have 73 different sects of Muslims? 72 different sects of Christians and 71 different sects of Jews. Moses' people, Jesus' people, Muhammad's people against each other? That's crazy. Those are shaitan's people. Reading the Bible, reading, reading the gospel, the Torah, and the Quran. Going on Hajj, fasting during Ramadan, going to Juma on Friday, giving charity, and acting like devils. We have to call ourselves out. So that our own self be true. Be honest. That's the only way we can grow and to develop. So Allah Almighty is sending us warnings. You think that was something? We have not seen anything. My suggestion, Allah Almighty's mercy is that for those who have understanding, for those who are wise, my suggestion would be make sure you have food and drink in your homes. Guard yourselves, guard your surroundings, and be prepared for anything. Because it is not, the world is not as our Lord likes it to be right now. So we may be get visits anytime, by anything. It can be peaceful, then all of a sudden, all hell break out. But this is coming from the people. Allah says, I will not change the condition of a people to change within themselves. What is in us reflects outside of us. So all these storms and all these tsunamis and all these hurricanes and all these diseases is coming from us. Allah is warning us. Change the condition in yourself and I will change the condition outside of yourself. Return to the shelter of Islam of peace. Guidance. Obey it. Be disciplined with it. And you will see the peace outside of yourself because the peace will be inside yourself. That's how powerful we are. That's why Allah threatens us. He ain't threatening no horses or dogs, no alligators. Squirrels don't get threatened. You go in the jungle and they get, you get eat up by a lion, they ain't going to be locked up or go to hell. It's the human being, the crown of creation that Allah has sent 124,000 prophets to. Sent the purified pages of Abraham, the Psalms of David, the Gospel of Jesus, the laws of Moses, the Quran of Muhammad. May Allah be pleased with all of them. To remind us of us. We carry the balance of the earth and the universe here and hereafter. A prayer that we should ask all the time, we should say, Oh, Allah grant me the good of this life and the good of the hereafter and defend me from the torment of the hellfire. That starts now. That's got to be the most powerful prayer. We just still do not get it. It's easy for us to harm someone with our tongue or our hand. And we think that there's no consequence for that. It may go for months. Okay, so you don't get locked up for it. But there's just as Allah is al adl the just. Allah says, don't come back unless you're coming with a pure heart, a tranquil heart. When he was growing up, uh, my mother used to send my brother out to get a haircut or, and, and to do something. We came back without having a haircut or doing We didn't want to go in the house because we knew that it wasn't going to be no peace. <laughs> we knew it was going to be holy hell in the house. But sometimes we would get so involved in what we wanted to do, and time would just go by us, and Shaitan would distract us, and the next thing we know, the barbershop was closed. So now sometimes we would go to the, 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 the bootleg barber, she gave us $3, then we'd go get a 75 or 50 cent clip, and my mother's looking at our heads and say, what? Are you kidding me? Go pick your switches. Of course, I picked the smallest one. <laughs> but she would back it up with a belt. So I'm saying, that is no different 
from spiritual laws. Allah expects us to do what we can do. Allah says, I will not put a burden on you greater than you can bear. That's why when you see someone first, greet, give them greetings first. Whoever enters, enters some place, give greetings first. Don't say, oh, they ain't speak to me, I ain't speaking to them. Because what it does, it calls a, a, a hardness of the heart. The Satan comes and says all kinds of things in the mind to disrespect or not to like that individual. Because now we didn't use our hearts and our minds to become an idol, a devil's workshop, an idol mind. We should have said, Assalamu alaikum. Then that person would say, Oh, my name is Allah. Then would have been peace. So Allah Almighty has sent Islam for a reason. He has sent the laws for a reason. He has sent the Quran for a reason. He has sent the prophets for a reason. As long as we're going and adhering and obeying, we will not have these diseases and these difficulties that we have now. Everybody's looking to the polls, early voting. For what? And I'm not saying that they're not sincere and they don't have good intentions, but when they get in there, they realize, I can't do anything. Because that's not what's set up. Allah and the Almighty never sent officials. Allah always raised up someone. When those people went to uh, uh, a prophet, uh, uh, Samuel, Samuel, to ask Allah to deliver them, from Goliath, Allah sent them Talu. May Allah be pleased with him. He was a sheep herder. Sheep herder. <clears throat> he says, oh, this man is not gifted with, with the spoils of, of, of material goods. We don't even know him. But Allah knew him. And if Allah had not sent him, he would not have been able to recruit somebody like Dawood, who was also a, a sheep herder. They were disciplined, and it was, and it was Dawood, the one who was able to kill Goliath. He only had five stones. He had no armor, no equipment, all he had was a slingshot. And his belief in Allah Almighty. He was one that was here and obeying his Lord. What's more powerful than that? And that's why Allah Almighty always send those who he raised up to go up to the people. They were asking Samuel, oh, send, it's, raise us up a king. Get, send us a king to fight the oppressors. Don't you know they had politicians and they had wealthy people there? It's like we said, Allah says, that they were former times there were people had more skill and more knowledge. So they were very, very sophisticated with what they had. And they had armies, but they could not defeat Goliath. For some reason, something inside of them clicked and said, you know what? We have to return to our Lord. We have tried everything. And that's why these warnings are coming. These hurricanes are coming. These difficulties are coming. So people will say, oh my God, help me. Help us. I'm stranded. Family died. My wealth. I'm sick. You forget all about your terrain. You forget all about your dog on pride. You ain't even listen to Shaitan no more. You said, oh my Lord, help me. Like Moses said, oh my Lord, you have any good for me. Any good for me, any good. Then the good came. What happened to us? Why come we so think we so different? It's not going to change until we change. You can have a black president, an orange president, a green one. I don't care who you have. They sent by Allah Almighty, raised by Allah Almighty. The condition is not going to change. This is about faith in our Lord. Not in no doggone army or numbers. Daoud to Luke, they were outnumbered. They were thousands that Goliath had with him. Moses was this, Moses' staff and his brother went to Pharaoh. 
It ain't about numbers. It ain't about all this wealth that you think gives going to give you happiness and joy. You can't take it with you. So what's the real value of it? Well, I said the real value of this world is a wing of, the, a, 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 wing of a mosquito. So everybody killing and stealing in line over a wing of a mosquito. I'm going to think I must get me some wings of some mosquitoes and start selling them. Since we dying like that, we think a wing of a mosquito is so valuable. That's the value of this world. That's what the law says. So what is wrong with us? If we're not with Allah Almighty and his apostle or those in authority over us, Allah is saying is there is no hope for us. That's the salvation. Allah Almighty, the rope of Islam. We use our intelligence to get all these computers and then a computer that we can wear on our waist now. And yet we can't bring humanity together. We can send somebody on the moon. But we cannot solve the problem of poverty and, our, and the killings in our community. What am I going to vote for? I'm not saying that I'm not going to vote. My parents died for that. I honor them with that. But I ain't looking for that. I'm looking to my Lord for this out here. And I'm saying it so it can go all over the world. We're putting this on YouTube. We're here. I believe in my Lord. And he promised us if we keep our promise, he'll keep our promise to us. And I believe that. And those who believe, Allah Almighty established them in strength and power in the land. Hired a whole lot of people to do nothing. Allah says always a few people of former times, of latter times, have always done what they were supposed to do to save the many. It has not changed. A lot don't change. We change. We go through all these changes. We go through some serious changes. And we end up in the grave. And now Allah says, you want to come back? You screaming and you praying. I want to go back a lot so I can... Do your will. Allah says, send you back for what? You're going to be tricked again. When you have your time and you don't get tricked, you're supposed to be there. And Allah says about those, there's no death for them. They're in the presence of their Lord. they just continuing their work. they just out water. They wore their bodies out. And Allah just takes them to a whole other level. They're martyrs. It should be modern or victory for us. If we don't do it, Allah is going to question us. You are Muslims? Supposed to be the best people to evolve mankind, but your environment was sick and decadent? You think Allah is going to hold them responsible? No, Allah is going to hold us responsible. Because we say we believe. Allah says, don't you think you're not going to be tested? That's just a test. That's just a test. A test that we can pass. Don't pass the test. Pass the test. Don't sit idly by and wait for death to take us and then to beg Allah to come back. That's not why Allah created us and brought us and brought us to Islam. That's not why we're here. It's a responsibility. It's an honor, but it's a responsibility. And we have to take that seriously, not to take ourselves so seriously, but we have to take why we're here. Oh, in the Middle East now, there are Muslims with no Islam. They run into America. But then you have in America, you have Islam, but we don't have no Muslims. So we ever get that connect, that direct connect, then the light, the sun will be rising in a place in which he said it. Islam would then grow up in the West. We believe that it will. Because I believe that we're not the only one having this conversation. Allah is who he is. And he's promised us victory. Allah about to wipe this out. 
It's about to be changed. It's about to be changed. We can be with the party of Allah or the party of Shaitan. The party of Shaitan will be defeated. If he even have, even if Shaitan have nuclear bombs, don't make no difference. See, we think that the Quran is tales of the ancient. And we think about those gangsters, Moses and Aaron and a staff, we think, oh, that was back then. But the Quran is in the present continuous. That means it has to always be present with the people there. What kind of law will sit us here with no ammunition? Even the president will not send someone from his cabinet somewhere to represent him without protection. He's a creation. What about the creator? We forget about the creator. That's why we suffer. And that's why we're suffering. If we ever get it, we can change it around. Just in a blink of an eye. Or less. Allah's just putting a call out for believers, putting the signs out. See the signs? I'm getting closer. Where you gonna be? Who you with? Who you listening to? What are you listening to? Who's your God? Don't let your nafs, your pride, or your this world or Satan keep you away from you. Don't blame nobody else for your difficulties. Blame ourselves. Because we can change it. We can change it. And it will be changed on earth as it is in heaven. One will love to have to it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi Alham. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala kareem sinin, Muhammad Nabi Yumi wa ahlihi, wa sahbihi ajmain amma ba'ad. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And we were talking about uh, what they were asking the Prophet at that time. And it was... Allah Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Allah was telling the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he was narrating to him about things of that happened that was always relevant for now. Because Allah is ever present. Allah is not the past or the future. Allah is the now, eternal now. Allah is always now. And that's why we have to be present. Has thou not turned thy vision to the chiefs of the children of Israel after the time of Moses? They said to a prophet that was among them, Appoint for us a king that we may fight in the cause of Allah. He said, Is it not possible if ye were commanded to fight that ye will not fight? They said, How could we refuse to fight in the cause of Allah? seeing that we were turned out of our homes and our families, but when they were commanded to fight, they turned back, except a small band among them. But Allah has full knowledge of those who do wrong. It's always a small number. It's always a small number to save the many. It's always that way. How is a creation have more control over creation than the creator. How is that? How is that? When Shaitan says, I have no authority over you, all I do is whisper. And you come. He said, oh Allah, I'm going to lead all of them astray, except for a small few that has your grace on them. Those who are listening to your words, your message, and applying in their life. I have no power over them. They're the ones that are going to still be standing when I wipe everybody else out. <laughs> Law speaks the truth. It happens over and over and over again. Like somebody growing hand cutting it. It grows back. You cut it again. It grows back. That evil keeps coming and it keeps being cut. It keeps cut. And we're in the same mentality of those who were time of, of Abraham, of David, of Jesus, 
of all of us, we have the same mentality. We have not changed. We're not evolving from no doggone apes. If we are, what's wrong with those apes that are still apes now? What happened to them? They didn't evolve. <laughs> so what's wrong with our mentality? We have always been what we are. We are the children of Adam and Eve. We have an ego, we have a soul. How many animals walk up straight and, and can think and can see and look to the sky and see the stars and the moon and yet if they were up that high, couldn't see the earth. There's a divinity in us. That's why Allah threatens us. You don't use it, you lose it. And if you lose it, I'm punishing your butt. Just like my mom told me, you go out there and you lose that money, you come back here without that haircut, your butt is mine. At this point, Allah is saying the same thing. Don't come back here unless you did your duty. We're all here, we're all responsible. We're responsible for ourselves and we're responsible for each other. And that's why we should be safe from each other's tongue and hand. Because what I harm you harms me. We don't understand that. See, our worshiping is for Allah Almighty in terms of making our prayers and going on Hajj and giving charity. But when it comes to working and helping other people, that's the service for Allah Almighty. But we're not in service for Allah Almighty. And we do things for the, to be seen of people. See, that's a good person. You see, he gave some money. Look at him. Look at him. Gave some money. Did something nice. No, we have to change our mindset. We're not thinking right. And the grave is calling us. And it never gets full. Of all the people that have been on earth, it's still, it's still some earth. <laughs> it's still some earth. And that's why when someone dies, and that's why within three days we have to be in the ground, because the earth is calling that body back like a bride and groom on their honeymoon night. Now that's kind of sexy, ain't it? <laughs> so the earth is craving us. So when you go back, why you want to go back? Why would you want to go on your honeymoon and you're not in the right state of mind, body, you stink and everything? What kind of honeymoon would that be? So we go back to that earth. That earth wanted to be happy that this person is an honoring me. I'm being honored by the presence of a believer in Allah Almighty that was on this earth as a blessing and not a curse. Because that earth going to say, oh Lord, you cursing me. Then it's going to send the worms on us, eat the body up. Just dissolve it. Just dissolve, eat it up. But those believers, the earth has no power to send anything, no worms, no snakes, no scorpions to eat up the body. People that have been dead for years that were believers, you wake them, you, 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 you dig them up, and you dig them up, and they look like, if they've been there 500,000 years, it looks like they've just been placed in just then. Because the law says there's no death for them. Yet they are dead, but they are alive. We don't understand that. Because we're still with our nas. We can't understand those things of reality if we're, uh, and, and truth if we're living falsehood. You can't relate to good food if you're used to eating bad food. Somebody gives some good food, you might throw up. What is this? Something healthy. So we have to change. We have to change now, not tomorrow. Because the promise of tomorrow is not given. Anybody got an email saying, I promise you, you're going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> if we ain't get it, if we didn't get that, then today is our day. We only have the present. That's all we have. That's what we have control. I can control myself to give salams to my brother and, and greet my sisters and brothers. Or I can scorn you and do something stupid, then tomorrow I'm in the ground. He come them worms eating my body up. Earth man just don't like you. They don't want to see you. They just want to dissolve you. You know, it ain't nothing, nothing personal. It's just my job.
Please, I'm serious in heart attack. Just saying in a way that we may understand and think about it. But Allah has sent us here for a reason, and we should honor that. Just be a good person. You ain't got to be no scholar. Just be a good person. Just be sincere in your goodness. Then Allah will give you goodness. Good begets good. Evil begets evil. You harm someone, someone's going to harm you. What goes around comes around. We do reap what we sow, for real. So why wouldn't we reap something good to get something good back? It's just common sense. It's just a wisdom. And as we practice wisdom, we live a well, wise life, a happy life, a prosperous life. Then we don't feel grief. We don't fear over dying. We don't grieve over death. Because we know we're with, our, we're with our Lord now. So what, we, what are we worried about? The grief and the fear is when we don't, we know we ain't did what we're supposed to do. Now I'm grieving. I don't want to go home. I'm fearing because I should have got a hacker. I should have did what I was supposed to do. We don't want to live like that. We don't want to die like that. Let's be happy people. Let's do the right thing. Just do the right thing. It's easier to smile than to frown. It takes a lot of muscles to be gritting on somebody. I don't want to. Looking all ugly. Being all angry. Holding grudges in your heart. Because if you hold grudges in your heart, you're holding envy in your heart, you're holding jealousy in your heart, you're holding anger in your heart, you're holding pride in your heart, and arrogance in your heart. That is shaitan. That means we die possessed of shaitan. Now, the earth going to eat us up. And angels going to beat us in the chest. Because we lived a lie. And we didn't honor what Allah Almighty gave us. And we're asking and begging Allah not to be like those Amen. who were led astray and received Allah Almighty's wrath. Amen. But those who heard and obeyed their Lord and were led on the straight way here and hereafter. Woman Law Tafika Fatiha, إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين